What's up everyone, this is Mars Band here, and welcome to Mars Band Gaming. In this video is our first edition of Mars Band News, where we discuss the biggest gaming news topics of the week, as well as address some Discord questions that come directly from our subscribers. So first things first, I always have to introduce the Mars Band crew back to everyone here, and to my left is Legella Kill. What's up everybody? And to my right is Haki. Hey guys. So the biggest thing that I kind of want to make sure we focus on for this week is the fact that we are going to be discussing the biggest gaming news topics of the week. And granted, there might be some things that updated as the week progresses. And don't worry, we'll, we, we will get to that, but probably in the next video, because obviously news is always changing subjects. So this this week, there were some big news topics I want to kind of go over and ask everyone here. And the first half of this, uh, of this video is going to be about the gaming news topics of the week. The second half is going to be focused to the Discord questions that our subscribers asked us, the Mars Band Gaming crew, and what this what I'm hoping this series is is that we will be able to answer those questions as well as answer the big topics and maybe have some guest hosts jump onto the show as well. So let's just jump right into it. First question of the day: um, There was a new Elden Ring mod for the PC, and this has actually four player co op. Um, so we have YouTube, uh, and this is, I'm going to butcher this name, but YouTuber Luke Yoy basically had created a four-player co-op that allows for people to start the game with all four players ready to roll right from the very, very beginning. They summon each other right at the start of the game, and from here on out, they can basically play the entire story where everyone saves will go together, and whenever someone dies, they go into spectator mode. And basically, this PC mod had actually come out this week, which is a pretty big deal. It is not available for not available for console. Um, but the big question I have is, firstly, what are your thoughts, and do you think that this should be a console thing as well? Because I know that one, that was one of our big uh, issues with the games of the game uh, was the fact that the co-op was a little butchered. So I kind of want to get your opinions about this. I, I'll, I'll let you guys talk first, and then I'll jump in and give my final thoughts at the end. So let's start off with Angelicill. What do you think about this? This this mod that allows for people to have co-op in Elden Ring. Um, I think it's interesting. Um, uh, you know, like you said, when people die, they go in kind of to a spectator mode. And, uh, so it's really, you know, you do a level and everyone's got to complete it, um, before you have to kind of respawn or re, re, uh, assemble the group, which kind of creates an interesting dynamic. So you kind of like get one life. Um, it's not like your partner's going back. Uh, you know, they, they go back, um, when they die, it's kind of like, a you know, survival of the fittest type thing and i think it's an interesting thing i like that it's four player and i think um i'm pretty sure that everyone can ride um yeah because they can ride their horses to get well. they can ride their horses so it's not just walking the entire map either yeah. which is pretty big so it almost kind of brings like a lord of the rings like fellowship <laughs> of the ring type stuff seriously uh, which is kind of cool um but i don't see it ever being adopted into any uh and elden ring sequels or dlcs um, because that's just not software style. Um, they're, they're big into summoning and stuff like that. So I don't see it as a thing that can go forward. But interested to see um, how the PC universe likes it. Um, I know the diehard, uh, you know, Dark Soul fans probably won't. Um, but I do think it's interesting. And, uh, um, you know, PC people do such great modding uh, that it's near impossible for console people to get that kind of stuff. I, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. But hockey. So, what do you think about this? Do you think that you know? Do you think consoles should maybe pick this up? Do you think they maybe should strive to maybe have this type of mode added to Elden Ring? Yeah, so I'm 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 for it. Uh, the you guys were the ones that got me into Elden Ring. I was I don't think I've ever actually played like truly played or even played through uh, like an RPG type of game. And the only reason why. I'd, I played the game was because I was able to play with you guys and it was we quickly found out that it was only at certain points but it was still fun enough and it hooked me like it still got me hooked uh, throughout the game so um, I think it would be cool I was going to mention like the Lord of the Rings vibe from like you know yeah. riding the horses like the whole squad riding the horses so I think that was a <clears throat> that was pretty cool that, that they were able to do that so I mean I think it would be 
cool for console to have it but like Angela Kill said I don't think that it's going to be uh, adopted you know I'm, I'm new to the souls and from software and, and all I'm seeing is that this is just like it's supposed to be the hardest thing like ever and I feel like just rolling through the whole squad might be too easy for Dark Souls uh, type of game so but I, I think it was cool cool mod yeah imagine imagine being able to just straight up just just go together and just dominate like you know, like this won't even this won't even be close and, and I think, on my opinion, I feel like console, they should have this game mode. And the reason why is because this kind of destroys everyone's, you know, fears about Elden Ring being too difficult for those non-Elden Ring or non, you know, Dark Souls players. Because I feel like that was something that everyone was, was complaining about. Everyone was saying, you know, I, I, I can't defeat this boss. Um, I can't defeat this boss because of the fact that it's... It's, it's too difficult on my own, you know what I mean? And, and so if you have this co-op mechanic added in, it kind of destroys everyone's argument saying that, oh, you know, uh, yeah, this is too difficult. Like, guess what? Now you can bring friends um, and you can complete it together. And the fact that you can now, you know, play and say, have all your saves combined is the other thing that I thought in my review of Elden Ring, I thought that was the issue that I had was that, you know, this whole online multiplayer, uh, you know, mechanic was kind of butchered to a certain extent where you had to summon people and it wasn't really fleshed out where they could have made it so much easier to really uh, to connect everything. And, and they didn't. But I thought this was a really cool thing I saw. And I really wish that consoles had a way to really bring this to the forefront. But, you know, kudos to those modders. They really find a way to make some really interesting and cool stuff. So next thing on the list here uh, is there's this crazy story that came out that basically they had marvel games lead jay Ung basically had reached out to sony and to xbox when contemplating a game for spider-man and they wanted this game to be an exclusive to whichever company that was willing to pick it up and they apparently went to both sony and microsoft and at the time xbox's leadership and this was not said to be phil spencer this is said to be somebody else that was kind of the outreach that they had but the xbox leadership at the time said that they wanted to focus on their own in developing ips rather than going out and buying uh, another one at the time uh, and basically uh marvel lead was quoted in saying i pinged both sides both xbox and playstation and said we don't have any big console deals with anyone right now uh and he said what would you like to do in response the xbox's strategy was they wanted to do their own ips and and, and essentially basically they walked to sony sony purchased it and now here we are marvel spider-man is one of the big top new ips on the market at the moment um so the question i, I pose to you guys is what are your what are your thoughts about this? I, I kind of thought this was a pretty bad look for Microsoft because you, you Microsoft has this issue of not having IPs, not having their own exclusive games. And I, I know that Spider-Man games have never really been the greatest. I mean, there was a play, the original Spider-Man, Spider-Man 1 game on PlayStation 2, which was a classic. But other than all the other ones were, were kind of hot trash. And I, maybe I'm going to get a lot of people angry about that, but they're pretty bad. But this game is great it's it's a top level game and microsoft kind of blew it so i kind of want to get at your opinions opinions about this one so hockey what do you think do you think microsoft blew it here quick answer is yes yeah like, listen like i'm I, like, kind of like you guys know and, and everyone's gonna know i'm pretty much strictly a, a shooter uh type of player i like my you know first person shooters obviously elden ring was that exception although i have seen people play the new spider-man and you know, it's cool. Uh, I, again, I'm not sure if I'd spend 60 or $70 on it, but um, if Microsoft got that exclusive, I, I might've given it a chance. Um, I think they did great with um, acquiring Bethesda a year ago. Obviously the whole Activision thing uh, would be crazy. Hopefully it goes through. There's obviously some rumors that, that it, you know, it's a little shaky, but I think it will go through. But they got the money you know um and and for them not to uh go ahead and get something that obviously turned out to be very good is, is a little disappointing and obviously the i don't know i don't know if we're going to get to it but the star uh, starfield and redfall being delayed to next year like the first half of next year that just like puts a damper on everything else too you know and for the future but um yeah i, I think it was a mistake yeah, I, I agree with you there. Especially when you own so much money, Microsoft is literally the equivalent of the Yankee of the Yankees. You're telling me you don't have the money to purchase a, a new game that's coming. And granted, 
So like I said before, Spider-Man games aren't really the best, but you're, we're talking about Spider-Man, the most popular of all the Marvel superheroes out there. And you're telling me that people would want to buy a game after, after Spidey? Like, come on now. But Angelica, what are your thoughts here? Um, well, it was an obvious mistake at the time. Um, yeah, you, you talked about Spider-Man 1 being a classic. Um, and the most recent Spider-Man game has sold very well uh, for Sony. Um, I don't think it hurts too much now because of the acquisitions of Bethesda and potentially the Activision, uh, the acquisition of Activision. Um, but at the time, it was obviously a mistake because, uh, you know, it sold, it sold very well for Sony. Um, Microsoft has more capital than Sony does. So kind of purchasing IPs are kind of in the wheelhouse for Microsoft and uh, Sony got it at the right time. Um, if it were, you know, if if Spider Man was a free agent now, um, everyone would Sony want. Sony probably Sony probably couldn't make a move on them because um, Microsoft has or is investing that type of money they're doing now. Um, so Sony hit uh, you know made a good choice and Microsoft um, didn't. And like you said, Microsoft has had a history of lacking those IPs. Um, and they usually you know you're seeing what their their methods are now which is buying ips um, because i don't think they want to repeat those kind of mistakes that they made in the past yeah and i think at the hindsight we're looking at this and saying yeah that was a big blunder by microsoft but i'm sure that when you're looking at it from the time period i don't think a lot of people were thinking that a, a spider-man game was going to rock the house and i think you know, they, that was probably what the Microsoft strategist was looking at, as in like, well, listen, we got to invest more money in our own IPs at the moment because they can't really do that well. And then clearly, I think we all know that Microsoft's looking to buy more IPs rather than develop their own from the inside. And so that would have fit in the strategy nowadays. But unfortunately for them, that didn't really happen at the moment. Let's and move on. Sony's, yeah, yeah. Putting, Sony's putting major money in their internal teams. You yeah. saw that by 2025, they're going to be putting millions and millions of dollars. Uh, to create new IPs, so you're seeing the two different strategies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I Microsoft mean, Microsoft using their cash now, and Sony is going into, and Sony has a history of just developing their own IPs in house. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, that's that's kind of been what the, we've seen the trend be. Sony's always invested more money in their own developers for them to go bigger, right? And I think these are like just just give you give you, uh, give everyone on that's watching an example. You know, Naughty Dog started out with being a game that developed Crash Bandicoot, Jack and Daxter, and now they're making The Last of Us. You know what I mean? Like that, yeah, that's a pretty, Uncharted in The Last of Us. That's a pretty big jump. Like, we're not talking about Crash. We're not talking about Jack and Daxter anymore. We're talking about like these movie like games. Gorilla, you know, Gorilla games basically started out as being Sly Cooper, and now they're making Horizon Forbidden West and Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, like these are, these are just drastically different. And you know what I mean? Like, uh, it, it's just insane how these games change. Uh, not not Sly Cooper, sorry. Uh, Gorilla is not Sly Cooper. That's uh, that's War. That's Killzone. Um, Killzone. Killzone. That uh, uh, the game. I forgot the company that makes uh, 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 Ghost of Tsushima. They were the ones that created Sly Cooper. Like you're seeing these game companies transition from being cartoons to being masterpiece movie like games, right? And it shows you that Sony's investing in in all that. Microsoft is doing the opposite. They're saying, all right, let's not invest in our own groups. And I'm sure they are now, like they're yeah, investing they in the ones that they own, the ones that they yeah. own already, but they're trying to buy developers that are struggling, take the IPs that they own that were classics, and then yeah. giving those IPs to better gaming groups that are doing better. Like all these rumors floating around. And we'll have our, another show next week, obviously about the new news coming out, but like a lot of rumors going on for the new June, early June, uh, you know, shows that are going to be basically posting about the new gaming content coming out for the year. And there's a lot of rumors about some old games coming back and Microsoft and Sony are basically now battling it out to see who's going to, you know, kind of take the lead. Cause right now they're kind of neck and neck when it comes to sales of consoles cool. at the moment. Yeah. Uh, you know, so <laughs> Let's go into the next story. Uh, the, the stupid console wars. Yeah, stupid yeah, console. console wars. Yeah, the dumb the console wars. wars. Um, let's talk Can about. That? <laughs> <laughs> Does that suck? Let's go to the next one. This is a short little story, but I saw this is pretty interesting. Infinite Forges, basically, this this Halo fan had recreated, um, basically almost like a side story that was on Zeta Halo. Um, 
and uh, this is done in real on Unreal Engine 5. So technically, anybody and, and any of us can literally buy Unreal Engine 5. We could recreate anything we want in there, which is a really cool function that Unreal Engine 5 has. It's like a processor, you know. It's like the, it's like a, it's an engine that basically you can create games through. Um, and so basically, this guy, Infinite Forges, recreated a scene in Halo in Unreal Engine 5. Um, and I thought it was really cool. If you watch the video, it's super realistic. It has really great textures. Um, now, the reason why I bring this up is because the debate on whether or not Halo Infinite should have used Unreal Engine 5 or stick with the current engine, which is Slip Space Engine, was always up in the air for a long time. And part of the reason why, actually, mainly the reason why Halo Infinite is struggling to kind of make updates faster because it's been found that the Slip Space engine was almost an update or upgrade from the Halo 5 original engine and they are basically using an older engine to kind of recreate a next-gen game which is causing them to have a lot more difficulty creating quicker updates compared to what it was for like Unreal Engine 5 which is a newer system. Um, so the question I, I asked is basically would you have rather Halo Infinite go with the Unreal Engine 5 but the downside of that is maybe being unable to have an open world game that they made with slip with the slip space engine and maybe just sticking to a point a to point b would you rather have the slip space engine as it is now and have all those components there and maybe updated as time progresses to make it easier to to fix the game or would you rather have just stuck with unreal engine 5 just have the amazing graphics there already just stick to the old halo method of going point a to point b i kind of want to get your take on it and see what you guys think legitimate what do you uh, what do you think here well we know unreal engine 5 is one of the top engines on the market um you know and i'm not sure what engine what engine does ghost of toshima use i think they i could be wrong i think they use unreal engine i don't know if they use unreal engine to be honest with you like unreal engine 4 is like gears of war 5 like so like yeah. think of that think of that like it's super realistic I, it has a limit to the amount of open world things you can do in it and, and that's the but that's the point that i'm trying to get to is that you know halo went with the software that they own um because they didn't want to pay you know a service you know to cert to use another company's engine right um so it obviously reduces cost um but you run into issues that they had which yeah they do have open world which i do like i don't i like the freshness that that open world brought halo um so i, I i'm not the guy that says hey make a game that goes from a to b which i do like games that go uh that are linear if they're a good game but i liked the open world aspects what i don't like is that their engine um you know everyone knows by now 343 has had a struggle recently with leadership and decision making, right? That's why they made you're seeing all these changes behind the scenes. You seen you saw changes in leadership halfway through development um, because you know they continue to make or they continued to make poor decisions. Um, and I think going with the software that they did was a poor decision. Um, I don't think that they should have went with Unreal Engine because of it would have hurt their open world aspects, a part of their game. Um, but they didn't realize that their engine was causing problems until way later on in development and so yeah i'm kind of this is not the most direct answer but i don't think they should have went on real engine 5 um, because of their open world uh you know they wanted to deliver on the open world stuff but they had to have updated their drive better or used a different engine um similar to those that like ghost of toshima does where it allows you with some good graphics to have some of those open world aspects without it being such a burden um to to have any updates it really it, it really is stifling uh and it's putting them behind the eight ball where they're just constantly trying to fix you know bugs when they should have been ahead of the curve yeah no i agree and I, that is something that is a big topic of discussion on whether you lose one thing and maybe gain another or it's the vice versa and i kind of want to get hockey's opinion here what do you think about that yeah so um Looking at the Unreal Engine 5 uh, from, uh, what was his name, Infinite? Uh, Infinite, Infinite Forge. Forges, yep. Yep, right. So, I mean, it, it looked great, right? Um, Unreal Engine 5, even before, I think it might have even been before the new consoles came out, there was videos of, of Unreal Engine 5, and, like, it looked wild, right? So, it definitely looked great, but 
again, I, I'm going to be agreeing with Langelico here. There's just positive and negatives. And um, again, the, the Unreal Engine looks fine. Or, I mean, the Un Unreal Engine 5 looked amazing, but if they couldn't do the open world, I would have to probably vote for going with Slip Space Engine, even though it was like Mars, uh, Mars Man said, was just kind of like an updated Halo 5, uh, you know, engine. The open world aspect, I think, was super important for them to change, you know, into that open world, and they have a ton of opportunity, right? If they're able to bring in a Warzone type of, um, you know, Battle Royale into that open world, I think they have a ton of opportunity. But again, like Langelico said, there's just... There were just bugs on top of bugs on top of bugs, just in everything, multiplayer, and you know, sometimes in campaign too. It was just, you know, they, they were they were slacking a little bit, definitely. But again, weird and weird answers from both me and Angelico. But I'm gonna go with leaning more towards slip space was okay because of the open world and the opportunity they have with that yeah you know what though i agree with both you guys i mean i think i probably would stick with slip space just because of the fact that they lose one of the key things that they made they made their but they made their money on was the open world story game which i thought a lot of people were happy with i mean there's obviously going to be some mixed feelings about all of halo games because just because the fan base is very much like that but the story component i thought was very well done with the open world and obviously you can keep adding to it right i think that was the biggest problem halo infinite has is the lack of content and the lack of uh you know just con consistency i think that's the biggest thing that halo Infinite's still struggling with and i don't think it has to do essentially the entire thing with the subspace engine but i do agree that the issue of not having updates out earlier is a problem that halo needs to figure out three for three needs to figure that out quicker um and unreal engine 5 is i guess the unknown it's like the it looks really good but you don't know the capabilities of what type of gameplay you have to stick to because if you notice most games that are you are that are using unreal engine 5 are mainly story games that don't have larger worlds that you can explore i mean granted i gotta literally look into every game that uses it at the moment but if you look at current ones it's all story based games now gears of war 5 was the unreal engine 4 but you know there's not a lot of exploration it's just a straightforward areas which really look great but not a lot of exploration which halo infinite was really trying to focus on so and yeah so i feel like that was a very it's a good question but i i think subspace engine just needs to be updated a little bit more and, and another thing too subspace engine allows for more older xboxes to play i don't think unreal engine 5 has the capability of doing that so that's the other thing i think went into this, the final decision there but enough of that now we're getting to the juicier stuff this is so there's some really good questions i some information came out this week firstly modern warfare 2 2022 is uh has been announced been teased and it had some pretty pretty cool trailers if you're a fan of the old series you would recognize everyone in that all the different pictures i mean they they really went with the hype machine here and they brought out obviously captain price you got the new version of guys which was the you know uh garrick which is the you know the player that you played in last in 2019 modern warfare but then they brought in soap you saw ghost you saw uh, uh, I forgot the Latin, the more recent new character. They had all those characters' faces on different like little ships, and they're driving. They, they say like a quick little line, and that got everyone hyped. And the cover photo is Ghost, you know, because obviously you have Ghost on anything, it's everyone gets all hyped up. Um, but it's been officially stated to release October twenty eighth, twenty twenty two. This is supposed to continue the story, so this is almost like a reboot of the Modern Warfare series. Essentially, they're just. Hey, let's take our most popular Call of Duty. Let's just redo the entire story. Let's milk that thing out as much as possible. Um, and I think there's going to be a lot, a lot more. You got to squeeze the milk out. Um, there's going to be a lot more information about this Call of Duty in the, probably this summer, uh, the summer game fest that we're actually going to going to be covering here on Mars Man Gaming. Um, but they're going to be doing a lot more of these conferences to show some gameplays, to show some story components. But I thought this was a little interesting tidbit. This is the last Call of Duty game before the official acquisition, because obviously we're still waiting to hear back on the whether or not this will pass. Most likely, it seems all rumors that it will be passing, that Microsoft will own Activision. But even Activision had announced that this is the last Call of Duty before they go on break, because normally Call of Duties come out every single year. This is the last Call of Duty that will be running on that every year schedule. So this is a big deal because this is like the almost the changing of guard, per se, where Activision for many years, Call of Duties have been pretty trash. But the last really good one, and I think I played Cold War as well, but Modern Warfare was the Call of Duty that all three of us played a lot. 
So I, I think, in my opinion, this was this is uh, this is a pretty big deal. Um, that this is the last one before Microsoft's acquisition. But I kind of want to just get your thoughts. Are you hyped about this game? Because uh, me, I, I am. I, I think this is this is the like the, like I said, the last Call of Duty that I was super into. I got I ranked up a lot. I actually started streaming Call of Duty Modern Warfare back in the day. This is when Warzone first started and everything. I was the first games I was streaming before you know Halo. Obviously, Halo Infinite came out and everything. But like, hey, Modern Warfare was the biggest game I was playing at the time, and I know all three of us played a lot of it. So, are you guys hyped? I want to get Legilla Kill. What, are you hyped about this game? Are you interested? Are you like weary? I don't know. It's a good question. Well, Modern Warfare in 2019 was the most I played Call of Duty, um, probably since Modern Warfare 3 or, or Black Ops, um, the first one. And, you know, I, I actually, there was, you get the normal Call of Duty, you know, rage uh, with the stupid stuff that you see, but I actually had a lot of fun playing Call of Duty and it was cross platform. So, you know, I was playing you guys from the PS5. Um, and, and, like, it was all good. You know, and uh, or PlayStation. Yeah, PlayStation PS4, 4, PS4, PS4. PS4. Yeah, it was PS4. You know, all the years go by so fast. Um, but am I like stoked about this one? I do think I'm. You know, definitely intrigued because this is going to be the last Call of Duty before they go on there. Uh, I think it'll instead of being one year, it'll be two years um, type of thing. Um, the only concern I have is because this is their last one before break time. Is this a, you know. The, the Call of Duty special of just trying to be a money grab, you know what I mean? So, you know, trying to just gloss over and remake Modern Warfare 4, um, which back in the day was an absolute classic. Um, but they did remake that one already, right? So this is a second reboot of that game. Yeah, basically, um, yeah, basically Modern Warfare 2019 was a prequel to Modern Warfare 4. I'm yeah, a Call of Duty so four. Yeah, Modern so this Warfare is like so reboot. this is technically like Modern Warfare, the original rebooted. I guess with I, I, I it's hard to tell because right? they already introduced tell. they already introduced Ghost and they already introduced like some of these characters that you didn't see until Modern Warfare two. So it's almost like they're kind of creating their own timeline. And I, yeah. I, I, I hate to say it, their own timeline, <laughs> silver timeline of Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> where everyone there's, there's cheeks all around oh, and man. there's gonna be cheeks everywhere and stuff so but uh, yeah i mean that's the only thing is that this is gonna sell like ghost, ghost is taking his mask off all the time yeah Van, <laughs> vanguard vanguard was the highest selling game right and that wasn't a good call of duty so this one everyone knowing that this is probably the last call of duty for about at least two years I'll, um, I'll, i'm gonna get it i'm probably yeah, I'm gonna and get this it. is gonna sell like crazy so i just hope you know, if they stick closer to what Modern Warfare 4 was, it'll be an enjoyable game. But it just, I had this weird, leery feeling that this is a money grab. Yeah, no, I feel you. Hockey, what do you feel? I know you were big into Warzone. We used to play, we used to stream together when we were playing Warzone back yeah. in the day. Yeah, so um, the only thing I'll say is that I didn't play the uh, campaign of the 2019 uh, Modern Warfare. I don't know if it was literally the same exact campaign or if it was, I'm assuming it was different. Yeah, it was a different story. It was a prequel story. Okay, yeah. you, played, you played as Alex Mason as a Marine that basically went after the terrorist groups and then you went out and then you played as uh, basically Garrick. There's a key character from the original Modern Warfare game. Uh, you played oh. as him. Basically, they and they basically like changed them up. They basically changed the way he looked. Like he he was uh he was as white as snow in the original trilogy. They changed the way he looked, and uh and obviously I didn't know who he was until the end. And they said, yeah, just call me Gaz. And I was like, oh my god, this is uh, Garrick. He, let's just say, I was he like, oh. new yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, this is Garrick. I was just like, that that's interesting. But I was kind of like, at least make him look similar to him. I mean, like at least yeah. slightly it looks similar. But no, yeah. So this is basically a reboot of the original series. Okay. Yeah. So, like I said, I, I didn't play the uh, campaign. Call of Duty for me is, I mean, other than high school playing the campaign, uh, where I'm pretty sure Price shot you and, and betrayed you. Um, I'm pretty sure that was Price, right? He shot you. Was that Captain Price? It was. Well, was no, there was. Well, there is a General different. Oh no, 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 you're talking about Shepard. Talking about Shepard. Gotcha, yeah. so Shepard. I think that was the last. Second one. Yeah, Marvel yeah, Warfare yeah, Two. That was, that was a good one. That I played, and that was wild when that happened, but. Call of Duty's always just been like hop on multiplayer, hop on Warzone, just mindlessly just play a you know a first person shooter. Uh, the 2019 one was good. Like we said, we we played that a lot. Um, I am excited for this one. 
again, I think just like Langella Kill uh, said, it's just a money grab pretty much. Uh, I think they're going to try to make as much money as possible so that they take the year off and then just dump it into the next Call of Duty. So I'm actually more excited for whatever comes after the year they take off. Um, they need it though. I, I I think Vanguard, Vanguard was the last one. I think Vanguard was like horrible. I remember playing the uh, <laughs> the beta and it was just, I was me and you and Mars were seeing the craziest things. Uh, I saw dudes like flying. I saw a guy like flying <laughs> through the air. And I was just like, what, I what is this? I, I saw this video of this guy that was just, he was a grenade. He was just a, like a 20 foot grenade just running through the map. <laughs> and it was just me after I saw that, I was just like, all right, man. I'm not spending seventy dollars on this or sixty-five dollars. You know, I'm I'm excited, but uh, more excited for the, the one that comes. You know, a year and a half from now. Yeah, no, I feel you. I feel like a lot of people are kind of weary about this one. I, I feel like I'm more inclined to trust Infantry Ward, but at the same time, I always have to remember Infantry Ward was the same one that made Call of Duty Ghosts, which was one of the worst Call of Duty games I've ever seen in existence so I, I i say like oh if it's infantry war they're gonna be rocket but they're the same group that made those horrible games so you know it's they they did that van uh the treyarch was pretty bad they had some pretty bad ones you know sledgehammer is like what what do you guys gotta stop making call of duty games like they, they are horrible at making them um but yeah you know what i think the best thing for activision is after this year Get purchased by Microsoft. Let them clean house with some people that are messed up. Make Infantry Ward and Treyarch the only two Call of Duty companies that used to be the only two back when, when it was the golden days of World at War and, and Modern Warfare days. Those were like the classics. So keep it to those two companies and then let, let Sledgehammer, let everyone else go make their own games. I think that's going to be the most beneficial thing for Activision. Let's jump to the last major question, major topic of the week. EA, EA, another another major conglomerate. EA was reportedly trying to merge or be purchased with another company, and obviously the big thing we already know EA is always huge on you know sports games. That's like the most known thing about EA is their EA Sports, their you know Madden and FIFA, um, and and even recently FIFA had they did not renew the contract with EA, which is now allowing it for to be a basically open season for any company to make uh, soccer games right now, which is a big deal. But EA was looking to be purchased or merged with another company. A lot of uh, reports, uh, basically, or rumors started happening when Activision was being uh, sought after by Microsoft. And one of the key ones that was being looked at was NBC. Was uh, NBC Universal was looking to maybe make a acquisition or jump into the gaming space, which was a pretty big deal. But more reports are actually pointing towards EA being purchased by Disney. And obviously, Disney has obviously got cash all over the place. And the reason why this is a big deal is because, one, for the Madden purposes, Disney owns ESPN, which obviously would be an instant transition into a Madden and ESPN. And the last time we had ESPN included into a football game was when 2K7, 2K8, was the game that they were playing and on those were the best football games on the market like 2k7 had that you know chris berman integration where you had those halftime shows for football and those were freaking awesome so a lot of people were getting hyped about that but the other big thing would be the fact that ea was working so closely with disney on those star wars games <clears throat> and it kind of makes sense on this idea that maybe disney might make the jump and just buy ea because it would make life easier for them with these Star Wars games. Because now they can own the company that makes their the, the, the Fallen Order. Because they just recently had a rumor or a teaser trailer about that as well. So I kind of want to get your thoughts. Do you, what do you think about these rumors? And who do you think will make that purchase and jump to buy EA? So, Langelica, why don't you, why don't you start first here? Um, Disney makes a lot of sense. Um, and I don't think Disney, I just think they'll have kind of a mothership financial backing type of thing. Um, what they really need is someone who's going to kind of change leadership, um, at, at EA for some of its IPs, um, Madden being one of them, um, and their star Wars IP. I mean, you know, they, they have the fallen order, which is a really good, uh, title, but the battlefront, um, they were really conniving even on both of them on just kind of the just take the love out of that that title 
um, because of the microtransactions and stuff like that, because um, that was a really enjoyable title for me. Um, but they made it hard to enjoy those games, um, which is which is what is so sad. Um, and, you know, part of me kind of wanted Disney to pull that title away from EA. But if they're going to buy them, obviously that won't happen. But um, hopefully, you know, they can kind of give them a kick in the ass um, for the Madden stuff. At this point in time, I feel bad for Madden players. I haven't played Madden in years because they're just copy and paste games at this point. And um, it's not worth your money. It really isn't. I mean, EA is such they they hoard out the Madden title. Um, they have no incentive, nothing that is going to drive them to improve that game. Um, yeah. And they just use it for money sucking they, they rape your wallets is what they do within that title um and it's sad like, I, I have no desire to play madden and i love football and uh i used to be a huge ncaa football fan and I, i'm scared for that franchise to come back because i feel like they're just going to try to whore that title too um but they they've they have no desire to do anything improvement wise to madden unless a mothership comes over and maybe Disney will, but, you know, I have my doubts. I, I just feel like if it's like NBC or it's like Disney, um, they're just going to be a financial backing um, and kind of just, a, you know, a parent company that just kind of oversees things and lets them run the ship the way they want it. But they really needed someone to kind of kick them and, and push them to make some changes to some of those IPs. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, Hockey, what do you think about this? What do you think about, about these rumors and who do you think is going to buy them? I think Microsoft's going to come through. And oh, oh, right. oh, <laughs> boy. oh, boy. Oh, <laughs> boy. No, no, no. uh, so, yeah, you got to really yeah, get Bernie uh, going One quick hockey. If they did not buy Activision. I think this would be the easiest one. Time. Yeah. They, but because yeah. if they did that, there's going to be some major red flags about Monopoly. Well, how yeah. about this? I mean, the biggest thing I noticed, and hockey, you bring up a great point. Um, you know, Microsoft already had EA Play intertwined with Game Pass, so like technically, you could you can play any. You can first buy EA games at a very big discount because if you own Game Pass, and you can also play certain EA titles on Game Pass already Great. because of that. Yeah. So the, I always thought if Activision wasn't being purchased by by Microsoft, EA was probably going to be purchased by by Microsoft, and I thought that would that would have made sense. But obviously, after Activision. If that sale goes through that they they would be dumb to to try to go for another big purchase because they they would be instantly sued for that because e, ma, yeah, because ea would, is massive it wouldn't get passed. yeah it, it wouldn't be passed yeah you know and i i, I think that going for activision is better just in a general sense um but yeah like ea again i am totally with langella kill i think madden is and people are going to hate on this i think madden is a disgrace the last decade the last yeah. 10 years um it was just horrible it was the same game the graphics got like you know a little bit better but it's the same game they try to make like a story mode i think it was just a it's just trash it's just trash five dollars every single year i don't think i've I think the last one I bought was like 2010. You know, it was, it was bad. Um, never really big into. They make 2K too, right? They make all. Well, no, they don't. Uh, yeah, 2K football is dead. Yeah, yeah, 2K, 2K d does not have a chance because the NFL signed rights to EA to solely make football games. Uh, so essentially, yeah. you have zero, zero competition. They could just sell trash every year. And they how know about, they, so How about hockey? How about hockey? Well, how ho yeah, hockey. Well, that's the thing. Hockey, other other sports, other they don't. They didn't sign off. Like the NHL did not sign off that they're the only group that can yeah, make like those NBA, games. Yeah, got two K, two K, and and they're ruining that franchise too. But yeah. Well, well, yeah, know, well, like, well let's totally make a comparison because technically the NBA didn't sell two K. They'd be the only group. Because they, technically they have NBA Live, which is the dumpster fire that EA makes for yeah. for for basketball. But 2K, I, mean, yeah, I they agree. Still make, they still they, make I think NBA they Live. still. I think I they know. still make them. To be honest, I, and that's the thing is that the NFL, I think, currently might be the only. Uh, well, just recently with FIFA yeah, now is, being, yeah. yeah, they're the only sport. NFL, EA is the only one who has NFL rights. Yeah, at the moment. yeah, yeah. yeah so which like, is yeah. Go I'm, ahead. I was gonna say I, I've never been like 
the only sports games that I played. Sometimes I play NHL, like that's like sort of fun. FIFA was fun. Um, the uh, the MLB the show is just horrible. I don't. I mean, I, I never liked that game. You know. Uh, I yeah. did at times. I did. Well, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, like, old, I think yeah. some of the older ones were like classic, but like. Yeah. The new one, I would not spend sixty-five dollars on. I just wouldn't. I'm sorry, you know. Um, but yeah, so EA with you know, obviously Battlefront One was super classic, but Battlefront Two, the one that just came out, just like Langelico said, the microtransaction made that game almost unplayable. Um, <clears throat> but other than well, that, let's yeah. not even let's not even talk about Battlefield. Like uh, that's the other that's the other uh, EA uh, owned uh, like I Battlefield got, Battle. Got, like, that's the other thing. Like whoever whoever buys them. First thing you need to do is hurl whoever said they need to have characters. Yeah. Just hurl them into the sun because they need dice, to get rid of uh, dice, dice. Yeah, it's dice. Shit. And dice used to be a very good company. They used to make all yeah. the battlefield games. And what happened they're, to them? They're, you need to they're. now say, all right, dice, you've had your chance and you blew it. Let's get battlefield to respawn. Who used to be the the guys who used to create Call of Duty went to create respawn. And they're the ones that make Titanfall. So like. Let them. The respawns the guys who made Titanfall. They're the ones who make Fallen Order. They're the only ones in EA who are at least money grubby and actually make good games. So let them go make Battlefield or let them make Battlefield Bad Company something that gives people some enjoyment. Like if I could have respawn make all the games that EA is covering, I'd let them do it because they actually make good games. So whoever buys them, whether it's NBC Universal or Disney, hear me loud and proud. Get rid of those people making those games and let Respawn do it or just hire some new people because this is trash. Um, whatever you're making right now is trash right now. Yay. Um, so you need to be bought out. You need to be merged with something else. So Good. so let's jump now to the Discord questions. And these are actually from our subscribers. And if you want to submit some questions to us. Crew. Yeah, this is from the Mars Band crew. You definitely, if you want to submit some questions to us, make sure you subscribe to the channel and join us on Discord. And that is located in the description below. So please make sure you go do that. Drop us some questions. We're going to, we, we took the, probably the top questions that we could answer at the moment. But we try to do as, add as many questions as we can and try to diversify, you know, who we get them from. So it's not all the same person either. So first question, and this is for uh, me as well, for the, everyone here. What is your favorite genre of games? And I'll start off first. Um, I I like shooter games probably the most, to be honest with you. But um, when I was growing up, a lot of the shooter games were uh, actually transitioning from being... Because because a lot of times when people think shooters, they use, always think of arcade. Like arcade-ish, just shooting, just everyone just killing each other stuff. But... I actually like shooting games that actually have a story back behind it. And a lot of games that when I grew up were shooter games, but it also had story. Like Halo was obviously one of the biggest ones that I always think of as being a shooter sci-fi based game that had a story to it. But there's a lot of others. I mean, you think about Gears of War, you're, you're also going to think about Mass Effect. You're going to see these first and third person shooting games that have story back behind it. And I had a lot of fun playing those. And those are my favorite types because they have a mix of good action action as well as some good storytelling that goes uh, that goes with it so i think shooter games for me are probably my favorite um but let's go with hockey next hockey what, what's your favorite genre of games yeah i would have to say uh i'd have to say fps you know first person shooters they ran my high school call of duty and halo just ran ran high school that's where i really started playing um i was at your house uh, as well when the, when the, when the family got together uh, playing Halo and stuff like that. So and playing what was it? Golden Golden Finger. Golden no, Golden Eye. <laughs> Golden Golden Eye. Eye. <laughs> I remember playing that game. So yeah, just the, the I think the shooters were were my favorite genre. Although Elden Ring is gonna make me get into other stuff. Those cause... open worlds, baby. Those open worlds. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, yeah. So Langella Kill, what's what, what's your favorite genre? Yeah, you know what? I Haki makes a funny point because I made that transition. First person was always my uh, go-to, but I have transitioned to my number one being open world. I mean, Breath of the Wild, Elden Ring, The Witcher. Um, some of these open worlds that are done correctly are extremely enjoyable, and that's kind of where I've been putting my most hours playing video games. Um, talking 150 plus now on Elden Ring. Dude, you don't even want to see what mine is, bro. Dude, but like, you know, like that's what's going on. And I even, you know, 
enjoy even seeing some of the Minecraft stuff. So even like those kind of open world aspects um, are enjoyable to me. Um, I still have a great love for first person. And I'm going to say this just overall. I always love a good campaign. I think it's a lost art. Um, I think it's foolish that people think campaigns don't matter anymore. Um, I think campaigns are, are, you know, really, I think, bringing out some of the better gaming companies that those who could still do it and do it well. And those that could bring a multiplayer that's fun and a campaign, those are to me are the top notch gaming companies. Um, so I always enjoy a good uh, campaign, but I'm going to have to go with open world now. I'm an open world guy now. Yeah, so you know what? It's crazy is that um, I'm just a fan of uh, games, like even platformers, man. I, I always love yeah, a I good platformer platform. games that actually have a story. RPGs, like, I yeah, enjoy. Yeah, like, RPG games are fun. Um, but, you know, I, I've, I have a wide array of games that I play throughout my life, and I, I, I've I been a fan of even strategy games, you know what I mean? Like games, t- turn-based strategy games. I've always been a fan of that, too. One of my favorites of all time was, was like, Advanced Wars. I was a big, I'm a big fan of chess, so I would play Advanced wars where turn-based army like army strategy games where you're just like trying to pick and pick apart your opponent and try to strategize against them i was such a fan of that type of stuff and i'm already hyped to play the next the reboot of the old uh, advanced wars games coming out but platformers man super mario like those are my those are my those are my one of my favorites of all time um yeah and like i i've been a fan of others like fighting games but i feel like fighting games i'm not really like Smash Brothers is my fighting game. You know what I mean? Like I'm not a, yeah, yeah. I'm not big into Mortal Kombat or other ones like Soul Cal- Calibur or stuff like that. I'm, I'm just a Mario a Super Smash Bros. kind of guy. My, my lowest is racing. I know you guys. Oh, enjoyed we're playing the Mortal Sport. Yeah. I know you guys enjoyed Forza, but racing is on um, near the bottom. Of my but you see, like my dude, thing is, dude. Forza okay. is sick. Forza is sick, but that like I, I before forza i was playing just mario kart was the only racing game that i'd play like and and that was it and but forza is like nuts i mean forza is crazy i kind of have a need for speed hot pursuit too y'all tell me you didn't we played that game back in the day we that was we played that that was with the cops the cops to chase you and stuff like that you had had to get away from the cops now long ago that is that's, yeah, that's a long, that's a you long play time. Forza you know. in that game, and you don't play any racing game in between. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That means you're bad. low on racing. All right, we got to move forward. Next one, favorite game of the year so far. This is kind of like our early, I guess you would say, early predictions of of game of the year. I guess you would say, and I, I'm going to count the fall because obviously, so far this year, there hasn't been a lot of games to be honest with you. Um, uh, I'll start off. I feel like we're all kind of on the same boat here. I'll say Tunic. No, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> Uh, Elden Ring. Uh, Elden Ring is probably taking the cake for the probably the most played and most fun game so far this year because one, it's the it's the sole game that's complete without a lot of problems. And Elden Ring is a fun game all the way around. It's kind of the adult version of Breath of the Wild where it takes you to this open world that's vast. It's massive. It's almost the same scale of Breath of the Wild to be honest. Um, and it just says, hey, go explore, go fight a bunch of bosses and. And it's actually not as difficult. It's difficult. Don't get me wrong, but it's not as it's. If you're any sort of gamer at all, you'll be fine. Like you know, there's this fear that comes along with playing Dark Souls games. You're like, dude, I'm not playing that thing. That thing is too difficult to play. But then you go into this game and you're like, you know, it's hard for sure, but I I, I can manage. Right? I can find a way to win this match. And like you get close. And you're right there like, okay, I, I got this next time. And you keep playing it. It's just addicting. It's like one of those games you'd love to play. And people might ask you, well, why is it not Halo Infinite? Well, at the moment, Halo Infinite's fun and everything. But I feel like Halo Infinite needs to add more stuff. If you add more stuff, you make it more fuller of a game, then I think it would be up there. And I think it still would be added as a Game of the Year candidate. I think plus, part of the reason why is because there's not a lot of games coming out this year that it's going to be in, in, in you know intertwined with it. There's only a few games. But that's my take. Elden Ring, I'm sure you guys are all going to agree. Hockey, favorite game of the year. Yeah, dude. I mean, it's bad, right? I, I mean, again, I've always been a first-person shooter. One of my boys, um, D-Rob, he plays with us. You know, he's, he's part of the crew. And he has always been trying to get me into these other games. And I've always just been like, dude, I'm a first-person shooter. Never thought I'd like any of these type of games. And, uh, dude, this game is insane. Like I, I'm like hooked, and I, I love it. I mean, it's definitely the game of the year. It's my favorite game so far, and I, and I love Halo Infinite. But this game is like something else. I never, you know, I've, I've played 
Far Cry, I played Fallout, which those are still shooter games, you know, those are open world, but they're shooters. Shooters, this is yeah. like, dude, I was never into swords and bows and bow and arrows and stuff like that, but this game is like just on another level, and if the other Dark Souls games are like this, I'm going to go back and I'm going to play the other Dark Souls games, because I really, really like this game. It's like probably one of my favorite games, you know, it's up there with Overwatch, even though Overwatch <laughs> has made me break things. <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah dude this is like a great game like probably one of my favorite games like ever so it's only jail kill i'm sure you're gonna agree elden ring yeah I and mean, i mean i'll add a little aspect to it i think prediction wise um if you're including the game awards where they kind of have the cutoff is november so you got to include games that are go on in november and december of the past you know last year um i do think horizon is going to be a game of the year nominee um i do think uh, Halo Infinite is going to be a nominee, um, but I don't think they'll match up with Elden Ring. I think Elden Ring is a clear favorite. Um, I do think its biggest competition, and we'll hear, is God of War going to come out this year. That might also get delayed to 23, which will be Elden Ring's biggest competition. With that gone, unless a surpriser comes out of nowhere, it's kind of in a you know clear running that Elden Ring is probably going to win Game of the Year. And it's not, not really a knock on Infinite or Horizon because those are actually two uh, good games, right? And uh, two good games, but Elden Ring is kind of, you know, they, they've hit. It's a thing. Those, yeah, know, it's just a thing right now. Big game in a long time type of thing um, over the last few years. It's probably the biggest game over the last couple of years um, that we've seen. And so that's why I think Elden Ring. And Elden Ring is one of those games where similar i guess to not an overwatching gameplay but like times where you wanted to put your fist through oh through the television and jump out a window and then time of such great joy um that's what elden ring does for you yeah, yeah. no i feel you guys uh, let's go to the next one here how long have you played halo and how do you start playing and being successful And this one uh in my opinion so i started playing since the age of seven i first game was halo 2 i was playing that game and i obviously did just just walk in and was kicking ass i was i was pretty horrid for being a uh you know being in the seventh grade playing this game that was shooter or sci-fi game but as time so you were in seventh grade or you were seven no seventh i was in seventh grade i was in no uh no not seven seven i was seven jeez seven i was seven years old so this like, is because big age jump. yeah i was gonna say this i was like no that doesn't make sense because i was like yeah how long you have, to, you have to be like 12 i was seven years old when that game came halo 2 came out um, I was seven, and I'm like sitting here playing Game Boy Advance games and N64 games, jumping to an Xbox, playing Halo 2, um, and I was I was horrifying. Like I I was bad. Um, me and, and I just remember me and Langella Kill be playing against straight up adults online, and uh, you know I'd get crapped on pretty badly. But my opinion is when you start playing, you gotta start getting used to like the the button, you know, the, the button uh, combinations as well as like understanding the key triangle of the game like the member the grenades guns and melee when you start getting the understanding that grenades are like your friend you want to throw grenades on a good angle to hit them weak and then you just got to clean them the rest with the last two parts of the triangle that's really what the game essentially is now picking up power weapons is big and knowing the map is big but you know that that key triangle aspect of knowing grenades melee and gun that's what gives you the advantage. If you know how to use those three, then that's all you need to know. Like it's just knowing how to throw your grenade, throw well, then using your gun and your punch to finish it off. So that, that's kind of my quick inversion of successful. And I it took a lot of time, but Halo, Halo 3, I was really good. Halo Reach, I was a freaking like animal. And uh, Halo 4, I was an animal. Halo 5 was an animal. And hopefully Halo Infinite, I'm still an animal, but uh, it was ever since Halo, Halo 2 I started playing and I was hooked for you know the entire time. So uh, I want to go Langella here. What? Wh how long you played and uh, how? What do you think is the biggest thing to be successful? Yeah, I started Halo 2, went back and played Halo 1, um, and then have continued ever since. Um, Halo 2 is what brought me to Microsoft and Xbox. Um, I was a Nintendo and Sony guy, um, and uh, that kind of brought me into the fold. Um, but I'm going to say this, it's hard for me to admit, but Haki and Marsman are better Halo players now uh, than I am. Um, probably was different back in the day, but from now, uh, they've definitely surpassed me. But things that I've known, I played Halo for a long time and was successful for a really long time. I still enjoy it. 
um, is like you said, you know, getting comfortable with making those, uh, you know, those quick, those quick shots. It's just playing, right? You just got to play. Um, definitely start at social. Don't just jump into ranked, especially nowadays. It's a very different world playing ranked, um, especially with the rank systems that they have that they continue to struggle with putting kids in the correct spots. Um, so definitely start with social, um, play with friends and, you know, just get, you know, you got to get consistent at shooting people, especially with those final shots at their head um, and using your grenades correctly. Right. So once you're comfortable with them that you got to be comfortable using grenades, you got to be comfortable getting those final shots on some people's heads. Um, don't just go for heads like, you know, all the time. Right. You know, aim for the body, move up to the head, whatever you use. I still use normal controllers. These guys, you know, they use those gamer controllers, um, you know, with all those extra, all the extra stuff on it. Me, I use normal controllers still, so I'm still old fashioned, but that's kind of my uh, statement on that. Yeah, Haki, and uh, what do you think? How long have you been playing, and what do you think is the most important thing to be successful? Yeah, so I'm 29. I think I started when I was 9 or 10, so it's been two decades, and that's probably why we're so successful because that we've been playing for a really, really long time, you know? So it definitely takes time to get good um, at the game. And just like uh, both of you guys said, um, you gotta know when to use grenades. You, you use them either in the beginning of the fight or at the end of the fight. Um, the triangle, grenades, guns, melee, just like Marcus Man said, I think that's perfect, uh, perfect like analogy. Um, and like Langelico said, play with friends, you know. Um, it's always more fun to play with friends. You can get better together, which we've all done. Um, but yeah, we've been playing for a very long time, so I think Playing together and playing for almost two decades uh, was was a success story that we've had. So um, again, it's it's a very fun game, and if you like Halo, just keep playing it and you'll get better. Yeah, you know what's crazy is that we played. You know, it's like one of those like I guess you would say anime type of things. We played so many games together that there are times we don't have to say anything. We just we just know what to do. Like you know, I know that me and Angelica, we we played so many games together over the years that. You know, I don't have to be able to tell them like, "Hey, go over there. I'll cover you." Like, I, I like naturally just do these actions because we played so many times together, and I think that's something that is really cool uh, and also kind of kind of sad that we played that much that we automatically know what everyone's thinking when they're playing. But I think at the whole point of me saying this is that play with people. It's the most fun thing to do. Co-op is such an important aspect of gaming. Fortunately, games have drifted away from that, but I thought co-op is such a fun aspect of that being able to play with other people right and just join the game with other people i think and if you're playing objectives be a good teammate play yeah the yeah please please be, be a good teammate. teammate don't don't just don't just play for yourself um and let's go to the last question here what channel hopes do you have for the future and uh i think this is kind of like a a, a big question uh for all of us i think the biggest thing that and i mentioned this on stream a few times you know this is like what this is a, a a passion of mine you know i i make I play video games for a passion. It's it's like a, a one, it's my favorite pastime to be able to go and just play some video games with you know with family and friends and just be able to go out there, enjoy what I'm playing, play with a wide array of games. Um, and obviously, making creative content about that stuff is just a side thing that it just makes it more enjoyable too. Because my hopes is that I can make content that people enjoy to watch and that I, I can kind of build a Mars main crew larger and larger as time progresses. And I, I just hope that my content that I make as well as all, all three of us here can give someone some entertainment as they're watching and just have some enjoyment so that they keep coming back to watch some more because at the end of the day all three of us love playing video games we love talking about video games so this is just like a fun little activity that we like to do and obviously we take it seriously but we have a lot of fun doing it and i just want this this channel to grow um just to reflect the amount of passion that we have and all the people are following and subscribing just reflects the amount of passion they have too so you know, I, that, that's my biggest thing. I'm hoping this thing grows as much as possible. But like I said, this is a hobby for us. This is like a, a fun you know, a fun thing to do for us all the time. Yeah, sure. There's a lot of stuff we we put in, a lot of hard work to, to do these streams and content creation. But it's fun. You know, I enjoy it. And I just want this to keep growing so more people can, can enjoy or see how much passion that we have for gaming. So I kind of want to see, do you guys have anything else you want to say for that? Or... Uh, no, I think that was great. Um, yeah, I have nothing to add. That's real good. Yeah, I mean, Mars Man puts a lot of work into this, uh, and you can see his passion and everything. And I'm just glad that I can be a part of it. So thank you, Mars Man. 
<laughs> I, listen, guys. I mean, we, we we've been playing games, and hockey said this. It makes you feel old, but playing games since like almost twenty years now. We're playing. We, we I've been playing games since I could. I was playing Game Boy Pocket, Game Boy Advance games since I was a little kid. So playing video games for me is just like a fun thing, and I the fact that I can do this to you know make content and and post this stuff for everybody is just more enjoyable. So I appreciate all those people watching. And uh, please make sure you haven't done so yet. Drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. This is going to be a continuing series for us where we talk about the gaming news of the week. And if you want to submit some Discord questions, join us on Discord. That in, and that is located in the description below. But also join us on TikTok and Twitter because we want to expand our social media as much as possible. But until next time, this is Marsman from Marsman Gaming signing off for the night. Peace out, guys.